like a bridge, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, to where I can police those people stern and by the book, but respectfully, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't got to treat them. Like even if you commit a crime, I don't got to treat you as less than, you know what I'm saying? I can be respectful to you. I can still answer you, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. I can still make sure that you're good. If you tell me you can't breathe, I can sit you up, you know what I'm saying? I can make sure you're safe and I'm safe. I can walk up to a mom and be like, hey, as long as your son is in my custody, he won't be disrespected. You know what I'm saying? And and and, and develop that relationship with them to where they know that if I have to come in and do something to take their, 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 their sons, their daughters, or their, their husbands away, at least they know that under my care, their family member won't be disrespected. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that the San Bernardino PD disrespects me because I haven't heard any complaints about them whatsoever, which is another reason why I want to work because it seems like they have a really good relationship with the community. But yeah, man, I, I feel like the more of us that are willing to get out there and try to help bridge that gap, the better it'll be. Yeah. And I feel like, um, I don't know about you, because you, like, when you when you retire or whatever, do, what do you want to do? You want to do something for the community or what's your plan? Uh, you were breaking up. I didn't hear you. What you say? I said, um, what what do you think about that? Like, what what you think of the community should do? Like, what are your plans when you you know fully you know transition out of your job? I was like, you know, I'm already in the transition. Like, I'm kind of doing the the basics right now. Okay. So I I used to work with them while well, active a few years ago. Work with, them. and I thought about doing working for JSO, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Mm-hmm. With everything going on, I'm like, even if I want to do be in that field but right now, it's not the time to go into that. So I figured I'll stick to the military police and go with that. But yeah. definitely it's a two-way street, like Trey was saying. You can't put it all on the community. You can't put it all on police. It got to come somewhere in the middle. We got to find yeah. some, kind of, some type of compromise to make this all work. Because without you know the what compromise, it would be hectic in hell. Yeah, you know what I was and thinking, man? I was an opportunity... I it's an opportunity to uh to like intern with a, a um a, a what do you call those people in a politician. So I was mm-hmm. thinking like I want to intern with a Republican politician just to see what their mindset is. Yeah, you know, because I you know like it's the thing where black people are supposed to be Democrat, but I mean I don't I don't feel that way. I'm not I'm not I don't have I don't do no political parties, but I just want to see. Yeah, I want to see what what it's like on that side of the house, so so I can like even put my input on it. You know, like yo, this is how you think, but this is how people coming from my background think. You know? Yeah. I'll say I'm but definitely that's- after living in Florida, I've definitely started leaning more towards the Republican side, even though everybody in our family is damn near Democrat. But I've definitely been leaning more towards the Republican side lately with everything going on. Democrats don't like guns, so I'm not fucking with them right now. Oh no, nah. especially since we got guns and they don't have it more. Hell nah. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, but I mean, uh, I mean, but like you and Martell are both right. And for those reasons, like both of those reasons honestly played a factor in me wanting to join San Bernardino PD, because like you said, you want to see how they think about our communities since they like most Republicans don't come from where we grew up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they're making decisions about a place they don't know shit about. Much like a man making decisions about a woman's body, it's hard for you to do that when you have no point of reference. Yeah. Well, being an officer out there, like I grew up in a community like that. You feel me? Like yeah. I like I know people like that. So, who better to police a community than somebody that's familiar with it? I feel like that's another reason why we have such a disparity between uh, the law enforcement and the black communities because a lot of the officers. Think about it. Growing up, when we grew up. How many times you have LAPD coming to your school trying to get you to join Explorers? I don't remember a single time. Bro, they ain't never came to my school. Right. Came to How my many school times? That's <laughs> right. And, right. That's what I'm saying. Growing up, we grew up, we only saw police when they either came to fuck with us, one of our cousins, our uncles, somebody like that. Or, mm-hmm. um, or you, you saw them on TV or some shit like that. But yeah, we never got a chance to see police in a positive light. Well, and okay, so I, I can say I can say if I did in a career day thing, that was one time for SWAT team they came and it was like, oh yeah, this you could be in the SWAT team when you order blah blah blah. But um, like you said, you don't see them in a positive light. I could tell you when I was in the sixth grade, 
we had like five police cars pull up on me, uh, my stepdad and my little brother pull guns out on us, telling us to get out of the car. And this is all in front of school. Like, I'm like, this. my brother's crying. I'm like, yo, don't cry, don't move. You know, I'm, I'm like, oh, go. Like, walk to me. I'm like, Jesus. I'm like, and it's embarrassing because I had to go to school that day. And they'll be like, oh, look at you, you got a gun put out on you by the police and blah, blah, blah. That's embarrassing. So, yeah. I've never seen them in a good light. You know, you know so because me, I remember it was me and my brother, some other dudes off on the street, you know, just riding bike to And they pull up to us in front of my house. And they're talking about, oh, we got a description of someone with a red bike on 137th Street breaking into people's houses. But y'all know where I live. I live on 97th. Yeah. 97th and 137th are two completely different areas. Right. Yeah. You're not in the same jurisdiction anymore. Right. Yeah. And so that's what? Gardena, Crenshaw area? Not Crenshaw. Mm-hmm. The Gardena or um, Carson area? Yeah. You, walk, you go over here in South Central? That's a big difference. Are you talking about you just got the call in like 10 minutes? There's no way in 10 minutes I got from 137 over to 97. And I go, where you live? I'm like, I'm in front of my house right here. Yeah. Where's your ID at? I'm in the sixth grade. I don't got no damn ID. You expect the sixth grade to pull out a, a, a California ID and be like, here's my address? I'm like, my mom in the house, you can go knock on the door. But she'll tell you I live here. Had yeah. us all down or whatever. And like, y'all can go. And then they wait for us to go put that, the bikes in the house and go in the house before they pull off. Just to show that, to prove that we live there. See, that's the thing, though, man. Like, how many, okay, so how many officers do you think in LAPD lived on 97 at any point in their life? Bro, name how many black people I've seen going through that street. Black police are going through that street. That's what I'm saying, though, right? So, and it's, and it's, it's not, to me, it's not the officer's fault, right, that they're not from that area because they're they're only applying for a job that they want to do, right? So let's just get that out there. Yeah. But what is the system's fault, the city's fault is why isn't why aren't you promoting law enforcement in black areas like you are in white areas? How come like like all my white friends that I knew growing up, yeah man, like like blue lives matter, all that shit. But if you talk to all of them in their in their life, police were only positive. Hey, police are always at our school. They're always coming to recruit us. I see them at the yeah. football games all the time. Officer so and so comes to all the community meetings, all this other shit. This officer came to my baseball game. We don't have those stories because they aren't they aren't establishing a community relationship with us. They aren't putting them in our schools. Like JJ has a fucking so for reviewers, JJ's my little brother. He's sixteen. JJ goes to Rancho Cucamonga High School, right? So. Grew up in L.A., but I now live in, like, one of the whitest cities in California. Um, and so J.J. goes to Rancho Cucamonga High School. This nigga has two SROs, which are school resource officers. One is a, uh, one is a female sheriff, and the other one is a male sheriff. Uh, and they literally go to all the kids' events. They go to the football games. Anytime something needs to be mediated between kids, they go there. They go to basketball games. They work everything. So the kids know them. You know what I'm saying? You want to go drop off something at the school? You got to check in with the resource officer so she knows the parents, she knows the kids. Like, literally, I'm up there when I first got the Navy. She's like, oh, yeah, like, here, here's my card. Give me a call. We'll try to get you on the force. I never had an officer say that shit to me until I was a grown-ass man living in Rancho Cucamonga. You know what I'm saying? think about it, especially our neighborhoods. They, they look at us like, oh, you, they're animals in cages. That's what it was. We, we had that, we had that, uh, that man, it wasn't a mentality. It was more as what they thought of us, you know? Right. Because, like, we... I say I can say like for us, we grew up in rough neighborhoods, but we got out of it. You know, right. it wasn't locked in no cages like they like they say you stuck in this whole cycle. It wasn't like that. Well, yeah, but I mean, who knows? Maybe if they, I mean, look at it. Like all three of us joined the military, right? So, who's to say that if the, you didn't have LAPD present in a positive light at our schools, at our baseball games, at our basketball games, and something that we could tangibly see? as a positive career choice, as a positive avenue to help somebody. Who's to say that maybe one or two of us didn't join LAPD instead of going to the military? Obviously, we chose a life of, of service, right? Yeah. Uh, and not only did we join the military, we all do jobs of service inside 
the service. You know what I'm saying? So obviously it's it's been ingrained in us to just be a help to people. Um, but when you don't establish that relationship, when you don't when you don't have that that FaceTime, you know what I'm saying? And when you don't put it out there as an option for people, they're not gonna take it. They're not. Sure. And then when you take Joe Smo from fucking Beverly Hills, <laughs> you put him in the worst neighborhood you can find that you can find in LA. And then you 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 wonder why he says, Oh, I was afraid for my life. He's afraid of the area. I guarantee you he don't drive to he's probably never driven to that area until he was assigned there to his duty station. Yeah. And all he hear are the stories. Everybody hears all these stories about South Central, the riot, games and all that. Drugs, so all they ever think of is like, oh shit, one of these black people will probably shoot me or whatever. And yeah, it's terrifying from the get go. Yeah, that's right, right, but I mean, that's you know that's, that's just that's just it's 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 the nature of the beast, especially because they it's, we have history of doing that and then in those areas. So like you said, the, the stories that they hear it scares the fuck out of them, like Nightmare on Elm Street. You know, it's this how it is. But you know what? Hey, I, I want to switch the tone. I want to switch the tone. Let's end this on a positive note. Let's end this on a positive note because we got we got deep and serious, you know. <laughs> I would love to have you guys back again. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to split you guys up. We're going to do some topics again. You you know, we have fun. Uh, send us off for something funny, man. Shit. <laughs> you, you, yo, everybody got serious. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are the comedians, man. Yeah, we, we, uh, we, uh, we definitely talk about um, how exactly um, Derek Jackson plans on making a comeback next time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, we could do that. We could do that. But uh, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up right here. You know, thank you guys for uh, coming out and supporting the channel. This is going to be more um, locker room talk with a lot more guests, a lot more everything, you know, just fun. I'm glad you guys came out today. Thank you both. These are both my cousins. Love you guys to death. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, and I'm out, you guys. This is the Gossip Line podcast, but the extra episodes, my locker room talk, my side little project. So hope you guys like it. Yeah.